Okay, so welcome all to our Bayes Rules Book Club here in the R4DS Slack channel. Uh, to introduce myself, hi, my name is Derek Solberger. I'm a data science instructor at a university in the United States. And I tend to teach a lot of introductory data science, but there are many researchers at my university who are looking into more advanced techniques, including some Bayesian tools. So I want to be able to help them out. So of course, that's why I'm here. In whatever way you feel comfortable, either coming um, on the microphone or the chat, um, can you introduce yourself, maybe starting with Louisa? Hi, uh, I am also uh, a data science instructor at a university in the US. Uh, I work in an economics lab uh, and my boss is actually a Bayesian statistician. So that, that we use a lot of um, Bayesian methods. So I want to learn more about it and be able to follow more of the conversation. Thank you. And Kostov? Yeah, sure. Hi, hi. Hi, both. Um, Kostov. Um, I work as an actuary in a consulting firm based out of London. Uh, and I'm just starting my journey into Bayesian statistics, uh, more from like trying to see if I can apply those concepts in the work that I'm currently doing. Um, in terms of background, um, I did my bachelor's in statistics. So um, there is more focus on like the frequentist methods. So yeah, just looking here, looking joining this book club to expand my knowledge of Bayesian statistics. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you both. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here. For convenience, I'm going to toss some links into the chat. Just... We have a t the textbook is freely available online. Here in the R4DS Slack channels, uh, previous cohorts have made a mostly complete set of notes for this textbook that we could be following here during this book club. And before I forget, here is the lecture schedule. These links are also pinned to the top of the Slack channel. So um, in, in general, for the Zoom stuff, uh, feel free to have your camera on, camera off, whatever is more comfortable for you. For the most part, we'll be reading through the cohort notes that have been prepared. But in general, if you want to emphasize anything, just feel free to reach out to me or other folks in, in the Slack channel. Okay, so welcome to the book club. This is a companion for the book written by professors Alicia Johnson, Miles Ott, and Mini Dogusu. Uh, we have the materials available, and you all looked at the code of conduct when you signed into Zoom. Uh, for those of you new to these book clubs, each week a volunteer will present a chapter from the book or part of a chapter. Uh, currently in our schedule, uh, it's one chapter per week, and this book has 19 chapters, so this is fairly ambitious. Previous cohorts found that this was the best way to learn a material. Personally, I do like the idea of meeting with people to discuss the chapters and keeping to a schedule. Presentations will usually consist of a review of the material or discussion. We saw the schedule and these sessions, as you saw when you logged in, are being recorded. Again, we'll try to cover one chapter per week, and that will maybe affect how much, how in depth we get and how much or how little we do of the actual homework exercises. We will try to meet every week. And as you saw in the schedule, due to 
daylight savings times, there'll probably be a gap in the middle of March to make things easier for people. Okay, so based in statistics, why we're we here, we have heard that there are at least two main philosophies or trains of thought in the world of statistics, frequentists and Bayesians. They both want to solve problems. They both want to learn from the data. However, Bayesian folks are mainly thinking about new data and updating prior information, updating the understanding of, of the probabilities. In this point of view, Bayesians feel that their results are easier to interpret and there are situations where the Bayesian analyses work better than in some situations where the frequentist notions might fail. Bayesian statistics, of course, dates back to Sir Thomas Bayes back in the mid 1700s, I believe. But the concepts were not as popular, uh, partly because the computational tools were not available until the mid 1900s and the computational tools make things more accessible now such as the Monte Carlo methods Monte Carlo Markov chain methods that we'll be studying in a few chapters yeah. welcome Federica uh, did you want to introduce yourself while we have a chance here uh, hello, hi, uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni, uh, I am a statistician, uh, so I would like to um, improve this uh, uh, Bayesian uh, knowledge. I've already done this uh, book club, uh, but I missed the two chapters, so I'm going to, to do it again as much as possible if, if I can attend it. And uh, so thank you for, for organizing, for facilitating this course. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. From the textbook authors, some advice that they give to their audience, learn by doing. Embrace a growth mindset. We, we all make mistakes and We'll, all, we'll try to learn from them. Interpret Bayes in a context, ethics or maybe more. Just keep in mind your own motivations for being here and practice, practice, practice. Uh, as we're in between the sessions, you probably want to practice through some of the exercises in the textbook, et cetera. The authors recommend installing some of these packages, the base rules for the textbook itself, some of the popular um, R packages out there, some of the popular base packages out there, and then some convenient tools for modeling data sets and dealing with qualitative data. The authors themselves we mentioned, um, if you're on Twitter, these are great people to follow. All right, so today we're tackling chapter one, the big Bayesian picture. We're gonna learn to think like a Bayesian, explore the foundation of a Bayesian data analysis, analysis and how they contrast with the frequentist alternative and learn a little bit about the history of the Bayesian philosophy. I'm going to say the words um, thanking the previous cohorts for making these notes. And if I forget to say those words, it's I meant to, that to be implied. There is a nice diagram in the textbook, and the cohort may recreate the diagram using the diagram R package. So the mentality is we do have a prior probability here in the top left and some data that we're looking at as well. We combine those into a posterior probability understanding of the situation. 
Now, in a Bayesian mindset, whenever we get new data, we might have to update our prior, our posterior probability. And it's this updating notion that is quite attractive and, and interesting in this field. But of course, we also have to consider the computational matters and how it might affect our later interpretations. Nevertheless, both Bayesian and frequentists share a common goal to learn from the data about the world around us. Both use data to fit models, make predictions, and evaluate hypotheses. Now, uh, I probably should have stopped and did this quiz from the textbook itself, but you, if you have a chance, do the quiz that the authors put in the textbook. And it also sets up subtle differences between the Bayesian and frequentist notions. We might clean this section up in the future. So, of course, what we're thinking about today is how to interpret the probabilities. I, and like some of us have mentioned in our introduction, are, are frequentists, which is the long run relative frequency of a repeatable event. So the assumptions are that we have many iterations of a scenario and that we can repeat the events over and over again, which might not be true for what we're actually working on. The Bayesian philosophy reframes this a bit and thinks about the relative, relative plausibility of an event, which we'll see in some upcoming examples. In general, for the folks in the audience, if you have any questions, feel free to use the Zoom chat or just let me know otherwise. The authors from there um, discuss what they call the Bayesian, a Bayesian balancing act. So let's think about this situation here as two different claims. Zufo claims that he could predict the outcome of a coin flip. Kava claims that she can distinguish between natural and artificial sweeteners. If both succeed at a 10 per, out of 10 success rate, what could we conclude from this? That is, Zufo um, had us flip 10 coins, and they predicted the coin flip every single time. Kava had us gather 10 packets of sweeteners um, and was able to tell us natural artificial 10 out of 10 times. The frequentist approach will discard prior knowledge. It is harder to predict a coin flip that, than having a sensitive power to sweeteners, whereas the Bayesian mindset would want to use this prior knowledge. So how can we balance that prior with the data? So let's start by just asking us, sorry. So th that's some of the mindsets that uh, were presented in the chapter here. Let's think about a different situation. If you're at a doctor's office and unfortunately have some negative or bad news to hear, the next question you, you might ask your doctor is, what's the chance I actually have the disease Versus, okay, if I don't have the disease, what is the chance I would have gotten this positive test? In the contingency table or drug testing mentality, this is asking kind of, of a true positive versus a false positive. A previous cohort uh, replicated the table using the cable package, and this is what we're looking at here. So um, amongst those with the disease, 
one tested negative, three tested positive. So four people with the disease. Amongst those free of the disease, 87 tested negative, but nine tested positive. So 96 people without the disease. Oh, uh, conveniently in this scenario, having 100 people total. So these are numbers are also percentages. Now for the first question, what is the chance I actually have the disease? What they what we're looking at is the folks who tested positive. So we already know that positive test is there in this mindset. And the chance you have the disease is this three over the 12 total. Now, in the second question, what's the chance that I would have gotten this positive result if I did not have the disease? We're looking across this row here, focusing on the 96 that do not have the disease and nine of those tested positive. So we have a nine over 96 probability in that mindset we observe that these two conditional probabilities give us two different answers. The authors noted that between the second mindset here in the false positive and the p-value, it is more natural to study the uncertainty, uncertainty of a yet unproven hypothesis than the uncertainty of data we have already observed. So that kind of gets us into the motivations of why scientists are thinking about Bayesian statistics, because the frequentists do have these assumptions going on in the background, and the Bayesians have these motivations here. Let me refresh my memory where we are. Okay. About middle of the chapter. I do appreciate a bit of statistics history. Uh, early on, uh, the Bayesian uh, m m mindset philosophy was stigmatized because a lot of people stuck with what we now call the frequentist point of view for statistics. And it was maybe working fairly well in the 1800s. These days, uh, Bayesian approaches are used to model COVID-19 rates. I tell my students that Bayesian approaches are useful in talking about um, preventing spam email. Uh, stigmatized because it, it is different. And as we mentioned before, this the Bayesian stuff became much more popular maybe about 70 years ago and in the decades since. It helps to have the advances in computing that allows researchers to actually do these computations. And we'll see some fairly complicated setups in the uh, upcoming chapters. It's a departure from tradition what people learn is what people use. And you probably or could see in a textbook, one of the uh, bigger stories about this was there was a famous statistics problem based on the Monty Hall uh, game show. And in, in the mid and maybe 1950s, the game show ran and Marilyn Voss Savant solved a problem in the early 1990s. However, uh, their approaches um, felt different than what many statistics professors understood at the time. So it was a bit contra controversial. And then there's the reevaluation of subjectivity. We are claiming, or the authors are claiming, that the frequentist notions are also subjective, and subjectivity is not any more of a dirty word.
looking ahead at how this textbook is structured, there are four main units or modules. The first five chapters will give us a foundation on the on the Bayesian knowledge with a focus on models and distributions. For example, chapter two will be about Bayes rule itself, and then we'll go quickly into a notion of conjugate families. Once we have some models in place, we'll move into posterior simulations and analyses, about three chapters of that. When the conjugate is not an option, then we might have techniques such as Monte Carlo Markov chains. Of course, we are here to try to solve tasks. If we're looking for quantitative res results in the response variables or qualitative results, we have regression and classification. So that will be a focus on extending our notions of the response variable and predictive variables. And finally, if time permits, as we go into the summer, we might have some nice um, constructions of our analyses with hierarchical Bayesian models to harness group data. All right, so the summary of the chapter, we are going to be focused on building posterior knowledge, which is the balancing of information from data and prior knowledge. This will be make us, the researchers, more adaptable to waves of data, and that will have us in situations where we could refine the knowledge and being less reliant or having less effect from the prior probabilities. And with more and more data, two analysts will converge on the same posterior knowledge. The previous cohorts, and you all have probably been interested in this material for a while, we should mention some other resources that are available. Richard McAllis wrote a famous textbook called Statistical Rethinking. Materials are online, and McAllis him, himself has made videos for his book for his classes, and those are available online. There's a nice book by John Kritsky, Doing Bayesian Analysis. Bayesian and Data Analysis, Introduction to Bayesian Thinking by Clyde Setenkaya Rundell and others, Bayesian Data Analysis by Gelman, Intro into the Bayes Theorem, Math of Rap, a nice video that was recommended as well. In case you are interested in drawing diagrams like you've seen before, sometimes um, called a directed uh, acyclic graphs. We saw an example using the diagram R package, which in turn uses graphics as mermaid, mermaid. And later on, if we're thinking about causality, we might look into Daggety as well. And believe it or not, there is a podcast, Learning Bayesian Statistics, with episode 42 in particular features one of the one of this textbook's authors, Mini Dokusu. These meetings are being recorded and the videos will be available as well. So that brings us to the end of the first chapter. How are we doing? Are there any questions, sir? I have not a, a question, but more of a comment. Uh, I, I thought that the the quiz was very interesting because although I have never been trained in Bayesian statistics, I realized that I 
do think a lot like a Bayesian. Uh, so that, that was <laughs> also uh, did not, it, it was data that changed uh, my posterior based on my priors. Uh, it's, yeah, it was, it was quite uh, surprising to me. Yes, uh, th th thank you for that. I tend to think a, a lot about sports and I taught a sports analytics class last term. And the way I think about it, maybe this is naive, is that if you're trying to predict how well a sports team would do, you might actually want to think about how well the sports team did maybe in the past two weeks. Whereas the frequentist approach might only use the prediction or data supplied at the beginning of the season, at the beginning of a year. And the latter might not feel as accurate. So the way these book clubs work is we're going to try to uh, take on a chapter per week. We could rotate between us for the presenters and facilitation. Uh, the website that we are using has these slides available for most chapters, thanks to your previous cohorts. Though we are missing some in the middle due to some previous scheduling concerns that they've had. You do not have to sign up for this right now, but if we could get a volunteer for next week, that would be great. Or if there are any chapters in particular you feel particularly drawn to, go ahead and sign up for that. Yeah, I don't mind presenting the next chapter that's uh, fine with me. So I can put my name in there. Awesome, thank you. Uh, just one quick point. Uh, it says 18th of February. Is is that right, or should it be 19th instead? Yeah, it also says uh, 11th. Yeah, 11th, right. Uh, oh, good point. <laughs> um, yeah, briefly, this group was scheduled for a Saturday and got rescheduled. Oh, right. So yes, you are correct. I'll, I'll need to update those. Cool. But these are definitely Sundays. Perfect, thanks. And so we are winding down here. Is there anything else you all want to discuss? Not at the moment. Okay, so it was nice to meet you all. Um, ha have a good week, and we'll come back together next week to look at Bayes' rule itself. Yes, thanks. Bye-bye.